Okay, welcome back to another episode in my series where I'm attempting to paint 31 animals in 31 days. We are significantly behind in this challenge, largely because I'm editing YouTube videos simultaneously. So it's more become how many animals can I paint in 31 days? And we're just gonna keep going and see what number we get to on January 31st. But anyway, without further ado, if you want to see how I painted this lovely polar bear, you can check out the link for it above in the cards. If you're enjoying this series and these types of videos really excite you, hit that subscribe, like, notification bell button, and it'll help my budding YouTube channel for my 2022 goals in my art business. Yeah. So today, on a whim, we are going to paint a poison dart frog. I didn't do a vote for this one. I'm a little, getting a little unorganized since I'm behind. So we didn't do a vote, but this is recommended by no less than three different people, um, I'm pretty sure, on Instagram. So some people have just said frogs, some people have said the specific species, but without further ado, we are going to paint a blue poison dart frog. Blue is my favorite color, I have marine biology bias. Anyway, we're gonna do it on a nice black background to make it really stand out and get some really bright colors. And I'm really excited to paint an amphibian because we haven't had any amphibians in the challenge yet. So we're gonna show them some love today and we're gonna paint a frog. So I hope you enjoy it. I really enjoyed this painting. This is one of the funnest paintings I've created in a while. By, by that probably like a week. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it jumped to one of my top five favorite paintings of the challenge so far. And yeah, but anyway, without getting ahead of ourselves, right now we are just creating the background. I'm just stabbing the canvas with paint. That's the only word I have for this kind of a uh, stickling motion. But uh, yeah, so I did it with a small brush, then I'm going in with a bigger brush to kind of smooth it out. I also did the bottom of the canvas, but I don't think I recorded that because it was just a blank easel for a while. Okay, so now we're in the blues. I spent a lot of time tweaking my paint mix before I could find a blue that was vibrant enough for what I wanted. But basically right now we are blocking in those colors. Poison dart frogs have just an amazing pattern of spots on them especially the blue ones and uh, I just I thought this was such a cool animal to paint so the strategy here is that we are going in and just trying to get the blue color in the right place at this point I'm not really focusing on blending I'm just trying to get the shade and the color down I started some areas of the blue I go and then just paint entirely white to try and get rid of the black of the frog so that the color can punch through even more. I mixed so much paint for this frog on my Stay Wet palette. I kept changing my mind about the ratio of the colors that I wanted in it. And eventually I, I was just using this blue and white and black and it wasn't bright enough. So I found this kind of green color that I had gotten in like a sample pack. It's like a, um, not a sample pack, but it was like a basics where you get like the 10 you get 10 different colors and they're just tiny little bottles. So I found a green in there that I never use, mixed it in with the blue and it really helped create like a really vibrant color. Anyway, yeah, so we got rid of the chalk outline. It's kind of funny, the frog looked really creepy for a long time because it's kind of just got this black void hole of an eye. But um, yeah, and then I decided I wanted to do a kind of speckle blending for out the frog skin to kind of work on building up that texture as well. So this is me deciding to do that and trying to smooth in some of those layers. Basically with the frog, I really wanted to keep it as bright as possible, as saturated as possible. So there's such a fine balance here between trying to get it really blue and trying to get it lighter. Because as soon as you add white, you're desaturating the colors. So there's a fine balance here of me adding a lighter color and then trying to add more blue on top of it so that it's more vibrant. And then I start going through and adding the white. This is kind of like the glare to make the skin look wet. So that's kind of like the shine on the frog skin in the lighting, which is kind of fun. And in the reference image, it doesn't have a front right paw. The paw 
the hand, foot, whatever, that's furthest away from us on the front isn't actually shown in the reference image. And I was going to make it up and add it in because I liked the way the ground looked. But anyway, I ended up just changing the ground so that it worked because I didn't, I didn't want to make up the frog's foot or look at more reference images. Yeah, so we're just trying to add in some of the darker areas, the lighter areas, trying to get the skin color right. You can see it's looking really fuzzy because of how it's blended. Oh, and the eye is so fun. The eye was pretty much black in the photo, but I went in and I looked at frog eyes on a couple different sources. And this is the paintbrush I use for all of my eyes. It's got that really fine point. So it's kind of really fun because I wanted to start off with this brown color and then kind of make it like a molten black and try and get it blended out. And then I really wanted to add the sky reflection in this frog to try and help add a bit more dimension to the eye. And then I chose those angles for the dots pretty specifically to be like a sun glint. But yeah, and then we're adding more highlights around the frogs and I'm going around the whole body now. It's kind of off camera, but I'm cleaning up the edges. So I wasn't really careful about the edges initially. Now we're going back and smoothing out the edges. You'll see when it wraps around the frog's face. And I wanted to have the freedom to blend the way I wanted to without really worrying about the edge. So now that we've cleaned it up, it obviously looks like a lot sharper of a frog, which is great and then cleaning up around its elbow area as well. So its arm really stands out from its body, it's really fun. And then I wanted to add a bit more details of the eyes. Okay, this is the funnest part for me to paint was all of the spots. I kind of tried to do it with the largest spots first as kind of placeholders and then make the smaller spots of the blue poison dart frog kind of fit around them. And it's pretty accurate towards the reference image. I like having this kind of stuff pretty anatomically correct for the species, but um, it was just so fun to get to paint this, this part of the detail. And it's, it's funny because the frog almost looks finished without the spots. You know, the blending's pretty good. And then when you add the spots, it really just takes a painting like this to the next level. And it comes together fairly quickly. I definitely am looking forward to painting another type of amphibian within this one. I think it's just a really fun animal. And I loved how huge the eye was. It was really fun to play with the expression and trying to get all these spots in was just really fun. So I was using black for the spots and then I realized it was a little too dark. So now I've gone in and I've mixed a kind of navy color. It's the darkest shadow color of the frog. Some of the spots, especially as they go little of the frog, kind of really fade out and aren't that dark. So I'm going over some of the black dots with this more navy color, as well as going over the navy color twice to make sure they're, they're dark enough. And I think this mix of spot colors works really well with the frog because they do have different variations in their colors of spots. And then uh, basically it's just trying to look at the reference image for the pattern and figure out where the main spots are and also trying to get the spots, the angle of them so that it matches the curve of the frog's back. So they're a lot more oval as we go into its back. And this, this part of painting the frog was just so fun. I think adding spots to any animal, this, this was the same sensation for me when I did the spotted dolphin last year as part of the challenge. It's such a great finishing detail to really lock in everything else that you've done and make the animal just really pop out. And I went a little too intense on the little spots in there. So you can see me go and erase some of the spots now to try and make it fit the picture a little bit better. So we're adjusting some of them and adding in a very, very light shaded of some spots as well. Now we're going through and just kind of cleaning up some of the edges of the spots and making sure that everything matches overall as a painting and fixing any areas that I just think need a little bit more attention as touch-ups now that we can kind of see the whole painting that's come together. 
think this painting worked really well. I loved how it was so vibrant against the black background. And with that, we have finished the frog. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, hi, I hope that you had as much fun watching the poison dart frog painting as I had painting it. And if you want to check out the rest of the videos in this series, the playlist is gonna be below. If you're enjoying these videos, also hit that subscribe button and stick around because we have lots of fun stuff planned for 2022 in this channel. And we'll see you around the internet soon.